Hey folks, real honesty with Jarmuth Lynn. I'm Jarmuth Lynn. I just got out of the Power Rangers movie, the new Power Rangers movie, which <clears throat> was fun. It was fun enough. It paid homage a lot to the original series, even had a couple cameos from previous cast members that you'll see at some point in the movie. Um, had a fresh cast, uh, some good backstory, like of how the, range, the original Rangers went and what led to these new Rangers being crowned. <clears throat> it does disregard seemingly disregard the events it took place in the tv series and stuff like that while paying homage it doesn't recognize those rangers but it does do some you know fan service for the series with some lines and a couple cameos from the cast members as i said but it doesn't say like oh these guys 20 years ago were rangers or whatever it goes a lengthy period of time and it's got all your favorite characters if you're a fan of the series like I am because I watched it from when I was 12 till about 16, 17 and I grew out of it. I didn't care for the turbo, you know, the cars and stuff like that. I didn't care for that stuff. And each series has subsequently gone downhill in my opinion. But I also grew out of it because it wasn't for me. It was for a younger generation. That's basically what this is. Um, I thought Elizabeth Banks was fine as Rita Repulsa. She, <clears throat> it was a reinventing and you even had um, Brian Cranston who played Walter White in Breaking Bad and the dad and Malcolm in the Middle, he was Zordon. Bill Bill Hader, <clears throat> or Hatter, however you say his name, he was the voice of Alpha 5. And the, you know, the cast of Power Rangers, like, or the cast that becomes the Power Rangers, you got the jockey type played by, um, I'm just going to say his name, uh, D-A-C-R-E Decray. Dacre, I don't know. Dac Montgomery is his last name. He's from Australia. He did find very Freddie Prince Jr. <clears throat> like, you know, appeal about him. I mean, as far as like, that's just what I thought whenever I saw the guy, which means he could have a fine career, but it may not last long. Naomi Scott, I think, could be a bit of a breakout star. She played Kimberly. She played that role pretty well. Looked a lot better with shorter hair. I thought that worked pretty well with the movie. Um, R.J. Seiler, Blue Ranger, he was a nerdy type, and instead of the Black Ranger being the black guy, the Blue Ranger was the black guy, but the nerdy type. So they held that, they, they you know, <clears throat> kept the characters accurate to the original portrayal of the cheesy TV series. Uh, Ludi Lint, I hope I pronounced that name right, he was an Asian guy to play the Black Ranger. He was the rebellious type, kind of go off on his own. But he had his reasons and his backstory. And Becky G, who apparently is a singer, I never, I've never heard one of her damn songs. I have no idea. She played Trini, the Yellow Ranger. She was fine. All the cast members did fine for what they were asked. <clears throat> it did take a long time to get going. To me, it was a lot like the Godzilla movie that came out, you know, recently. Like the new one that had Ken Watanabe and the only Olsen sister that wasn't a crack addict. Um, or a drug addict or whatever the heck. It was a lot of like backstory, backstory, and then they would show some action, but then they would cut away and then they would go back to the action. It just, <clears throat> it was, it should have been called Power Rangers Teen Angst, the movie. This could have been long done the CW network had it not been for the big budget. Had a very Transformers-like look with the Megazord and the Zords themselves and the putties and the Power Ranger, you know, armor and gear. But it had a lot of setup. I mean, you know, they're, while they while they were paying homage to the TV series, <clears throat> they had to retell this for another generation. So you see how the original Rangers went, how Rita, you know, be, came to be, how Zordon came to be what he, you know, how Zordon came to be as he is, and a lot of lo a lot of stuff like can these people believe? Can these five, you know, teens from teens slash twenty something because they were all at least twenty or more. <clears throat> can they all believe in themselves long enough to, um, to you know, band together and <clears throat> beat back Rita, this ultimate evil? And they were able to. It was, it was two and a half stars out of four because I, I got, I, I did get some, you know, I did get hyped a little bit during the action scenes, which were fun. But again, it had a very Transformers-like look, and I'm, I kind of soured on the Transformers movies mainly because it, the Michael Bay ones, mainly because they were terrible. Really, besides the action, they were absolute shit. <clears throat> but y you have like, you know, you see how Zordon came, how came to how he was. You, fl you flash forward millions and millions of years to current day. Rita attacking, you know, coming coming back to life and attacking people. It was very PG, it was very dark, and sometimes they tried to treat it a little too seriously, and I'm not saying they should have treated it like a comedy exactly, <clears throat> but the show was cheesy as hell, 
And you're telling me you couldn't make it cheesy? You, you just couldn't make this like really, really cheesy? It's about five kids that get armor from these coins that beat up monsters and, you know, fight a lady who's got a golden staff that raises um, a golden being named Goldar. And I didn't care for how they make Goldar look, but then again, he was a guy in a goofy costume uh, before. <clears throat> but it was fine. It wasn't, it wasn't a great movie. But should you watch it if you were a fan of the original series? Absolutely. Because it is entertainment. It's not the greatest thing ever, but it's meant to be entertaining. And it works, it works well enough for what it is. If you go in with expectations that are about here, <clears throat> and don't set them sky high, then you'll enjoy it. Because the action takes a while to get going because they got to establish the backstory, however, you know, stereotypical it is of every single person and go through a lot of, I believe in myself, wait, I don't. I believe in myself, oh, I cost, I cost our team a whole bunch. Just a lot of by the number stuff. Still enjoyable though. Enjoyable enough. So I don't know if I'd pay full price for it. Make sure you have passes. I had a pass, I used it and I loved it. <clears throat> you know, because I didn't have to pay for it. But I loved parts of it. I probably won't be buying it on DVD, but for a person who loved the original show, series, and even the first, you know, two movies, especially the first movie in 95, I was 14 years old, what do you expect? <clears throat> it was fine. It wasn't the greatest thing ever. There were even a couple cameo appearances by cast members that you can spot. Let's see, and let's see what you all thought. So again, two and a half out of four stars. It does also set up the possibility that there will be a sequel if this does pretty well. Because <clears throat> that's a problem with like first editions. It's like, you know, same with the Divergent movie, the, the first Divergent movie, Hunger Games, and stuff like that. You set up enough stuff where it almost feels like they get it more right with the sequel. <clears throat> so maybe they will here and maybe they'll put more action into it and stuff, and it'll just be more balls to the wall and stuff like that, and less about establishing, establishing, and having some stuff where you're almost like, that's it. I still enjoyed it, but it it is obviously saying up where they just went this, they went about this far, and maybe the sequel, if, if it's successful, will go above it. <clears throat> so that's what I gotta say. Anybody that's watched it already, do you agree, do you disagree? Like, share, comment, subscribe. Twitter link is in the description. It's been Real Aussie with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.